Okay. Much better. Let's do this. Hey, what's up guys? This is Coop from GarageShimReviews.com and today I'm going to talk to you about the best barbell for most people. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of comments from people saying, you know, I think this bar is better. I don't know why you picked that bar. I get it. Everybody has their favorite barbell and really barbells are kind of subjective. It's not like, you know, like technology and things like that. Like, you know, there's a lot of preferences that go into choosing a barbell. That said, I've used a lot of barbells, and because of that, I think I have at least some authority to be able to say which barbell I think is the best. And so, the barbell that I'm choosing today is the one that I think is the best for most people. This isn't the best powerlifting barbell. This isn't the best Olympic weightlifting barbell. This isn't necessarily the best CrossFit barbell. This is just the best barbell for most people people for most applications, okay? So this is for general fitness. If somebody's asking me, Cooper, what barbell should I get? I squat, I deadlift, I bench, I use it in a landmine, I may do some power cleans, maybe some power snatches. I just want a general fitness barbell. This is that barbell. Now, there's a lot of factors that went into choosing these barbells. I've written all about how we picked them, how we tested them, about every barbell that I've used and every one that I'm comparing these to, everything like that on my website. So if you go in the link in the bio below, you can check it out. But that said, there's a few factors that I'll talk on that I think I really based our decisions on. And the first one is just overall construction. So the overall quality of the barbell, how it's put together, the materials used, the strength of the steel, things like that. The second thing is the neural. Now, neuraling is very much subjective. Some people like aggressive neuraling, some people like passive neuraling. That said, for an application like general fitness, I think the neuraling needs to be, you know, have a medium, you know, neural to it. It shouldn't be very passive and it shouldn't be crazy aggressive where it's ripping off your skin. And you can tell how good the neural is by where it starts and stops, things like that. What kind of quality of machining that the company is doing, okay? The third thing is the spin of the barbell. Now some people really want a lot of spin, some people don't want a lot of spin. I'm using this for general fitness. So this is something that you're going to have to bench with and I don't like a, you know, a barbell just spinning like crazy. For instance, I wouldn't use an Alico for benching because I don't like to spin like crazy. It feels uncomfortable and kind of, you know, unstable. Two hours later. Stop the madness. The fourth thing is the whip. Now. They've done testing and there really isn't anybody who's been able to say like one bar is better at whip than another. But so I'm just kind of taking the company's word for it. So we want a whip that's, you know, whippy enough for the Olympic lifts, the classic lifts, but also stiff enough, you know, for when you're squatting basically, okay? So it's got to have a good um, medium to it. And then the last thing that I'll really say is the last big thing that we took into consideration is the price, okay? For general fitness, we're looking at a barbell that is the best value, okay? This isn't necessarily the absolute best performer. This is a barbell that, you know, its specs align with, you know, its cost, okay? And so it's gotta, it's gotta be both. We can't just have a barbell that's super great, you know, but also super expensive for most people, okay? Those are what I took into consideration. So I'll start with the budget pick. The barbell that I think is the best budget pick out there for general fitness is the Cap Barbell OB86B. Now the Cap Barbell I have is the OB86B PBCK, something like that. Basically it's the power bar version of the OB86B. Okay, so they're very similar, but the Cap Barbell OB86B in many people's opinion is one of the best value barbells out there. Okay, it's priced really low, you can get it for 130 bucks, I think on Amazon, and sometimes it's lower. Um, but it's a cheap barbell that's gonna get the job done. The neural isn't outstanding. The tensile strength isn't crazy high. I believe it's around 150. You know, it doesn't spin all that great. It's got you know composite bushings. 
the steel isn't all that great, the coating really, it starts to rust soon, but it gets the job done, okay? And for 130 bucks, like my gosh, that's hard to beat for a barbell. And so if you want a cheap barbell that's gonna get the job done, check out the Cap Barbell OB86B. The next bar barbell I wanna discuss is our upgrade pick. And this one I've kind of gone, gone back and forth on. On our website, we have it listed as the stainless steel version of the Ohio bar. I've recently got in the Cerakote bar from Rogue Fitness, and it's an awesome bar. I think for a lot of people, the stainless steel bar is gonna be a better version, but I really like the Cerakote version. The reason I like the Cerakote version is because I'm in a garage. I have a lot of you know factors that play into how fast that barbell is gonna be you know, face corrosion and how fast it's gonna rust. And that's just a factor that you face, especially being in the Midwest. Now, although I have only had the Rogue Cerakote bar for a short period of time, I reviewed it in the past, I've had a Cerakote barbell, the American Barbell Mammoth Power Bar for quite a while, and it's faced no corrosion. I mean, the way that this has resisted corrosion is outstanding. I've had stainless steel bars in the past, and they've rusted quicker than the Cerakote bar. So from a corrosion resistance standpoint, I like Cerakote more than stainless steel, but stainless steel is just cool, right? So I would say that our upgrade pick would really be for most people, the stainless steel Rogue Ohio bar. It's an awesome bar. It's got composite bushings. It's built just like the Rogue Ohio bar, except it uses a stainless steel shaft and then chrome sleeves. I hope someday they use stainless steel sleeves, but they don't right now, and it comes with Rogue's outstanding warranty, customer service, and everything that comes along with buying a Rogue bar, including great second-hand you know, sales. So if you wanna take this and sell it on Craigslist, you're not gonna be getting a whole lot less than what you bought it for. The same can't be said for a lot of brands out there. Okay, so that's our budget and then our upgrade pick, and so our runner-up is a barbell that I think a lot of people in the functional fitness, CrossFit space know about, but not a lot of people outside of that, I think, you know, I may be wrong in that, but I think the company Fringe Sport isn't as well known as I think they should be because they're producing a lot of great equipment at awesome prices. And so our second, you know, our runner up to our first pick is the Fringe Sport Wonder Bar. The Fringe Sport Wonder Bar is a 28 millimeter shaft. It's got an awesome neural, it's black zinc shaft, black zinc sleeves. One of the reasons that I didn't pick it for our top pick is because it does have those black zinc sleeves which tear up quickly. It also has, I don't like the neural quite as much as I do our top pick. Um, the spin is actually a little bit better than our top pick as far as speed. Um, but I also like a 28 and a half millimeter shaft for most applications. A 28 millimeter, although it's great for Olympic lifting, I would rather have a little bit thicker shaft for you know when I'm doing squats and things like that. One outstanding feature of the French Sport Bar is its price, okay? It's around $200, okay? And you're getting an absolutely outstanding bar for around $200 shipped, okay? They also often, also often have sales. Fringe Sport has an awesome warranty. I'm telling you, if anything happens with the Fringe Sport bar, Peter Keller is gonna take care of you. He's the owner of the company. He's an awesome guy, and he cares a lot about his company, and he likes his name to be well known, and because of that, if there's an issue with your barbell, bending, things like that, their warranty is tops, okay? Great company, great barbell, great features. Um, and an outstanding price. So that was an easy choice for a runner up and really it almost made the top spot. Okay, so the top barbell for most people in my opinion is the Rogue Bar 2.0. Rogue, they just do things right, okay? Sure, it's a little bit more expensive than some others, not a whole lot more expensive, but you're also getting the Rogue name. And what comes with the Rogue name is one, a great warranty. Okay, Rogue has an outstanding warranty. They have outstanding customer service. Their shipping is quicker than anybody else. Okay, they just, they do a lot of things that are, are, are great. Okay, they're known for those things. But the barbell itself is outstanding. Okay, for general purpose, it's basically just what I would want in a barbell. Okay, it's got composite bushings. Um, the knurling is a, you know, the perfect knurling for most applications, okay? Rogue puts a lot of money into their machinery and you can tell in what comes out of it. You know, they're probably using the most expensive machinery on all of their barbells. The barbell is also made in the USA. Not that I think that really matters so much for purchasing it, but I like to support American manufacturing. That said, 
I, I don't think it should be. It wasn't a crazy choice, at least for me, in purchasing the bar. It has a 28 and a half millimeter shaft. It's 190K tensile strength, which is actually a little bit less than our runner up pick. But for most people, I think 190 is more than needed. You know, for most people, you are never going to have trouble with the barbell, you know, bending or anything like that unless you drop it on pins. Rogue has decided to use bright zinc on the sleeves. I think bright zinc is a good choice because it doesn't scar as easy. I'd really like to see chrome. I think chrome would be a little bit better choice, but it'd probably increase the price as well. They also have these customization bands on the sleeve collar that really for like, for me it doesn't really matter, but if you're a commercial gym owner and you want to customize your gym, I think it's a good opportunity, although I think Cerakote would be even better. Finally, the barbell just performs well. I prefer it in hand, it may be the knurling, I'm not sure what it is, but it's a great barbell. That said, all of the choices that we brought about are great choices. Whether you want, you know, our top pick, which is the Rogue Bar 2.0, our runner up, which is a less expensive, but really very similar, very close to the Rogue Bar 2.0, and that is the Fringe Sport Wonder Bar. Whether you want to spend a little bit more and get a little bit better bar, corrosion resistance in the Rogue Ohio stainless steel bar or the Rogue Cerakote bar, or if you just don't want to spend a lot of money and want the cheapest one available, or just want a second you know, beater bar, then I would check out the Cap Barbell OB86B. So what barbell do you think is the best? You may not like any of these barbells. You may have a better barbell in mind that you think is better for most people. Let me know in the comments. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. You know, if you think a bar is better than the ones I selected, then let me know. Okay, because I'm out, I'm always looking for more barbells. But this is Coop with GarageGymReviews.com. I hope this helps you in your future purchase of a barbell. And I'll talk at you later. Skater.